at the beginning of the night, you might remember I mentioned some statistics. We had quite a few numbers. And from the 309 Australian donors last year, there were 931 recipients. And actually, there were 978 organs donated, but 931 recipients. It's my great pleasure to introduce Sam McDonald to the stage. Sam is an organ donor recipient, sorry, an organ recipient, and she's here to, to step through with us some of her story. So welcome, Sam. Thank you. Sam, just to start off, can you tell us about your situation? Um, I guess my situation in a nutshell is um, 13 years ago when I was 25, um, I received a double lung transplant for a condition called cystic fibrosis. And just as a bit of a background to that condition, cystic fibrosis is a genetic disease um, in which thick, sticky mucus affects a, a whole range of uh, different organs in the body, but particularly the lungs and digestive system. And in the lungs, um, that mucus helps to trap bacteria and is a great environment for them to breed. Um, and that results in lots of chest infections and blockages that cause irreversible lung damage. There's no cure for CF, so when the lung damage becomes too severe, the only treatment option at that point to survive is it a lung transplant. transplant. So you lived with that for 25 years yes. before this became an option? Yes. Mm. And Sam, what did the transplant mean for you? Um, at a very basic level, having the, the transplant meant being able to live. Um, but beyond that, and, and more importantly for me, it, um, having the transplant gave me a chance to experience a, a relatively normal, healthy and independent lifestyle. And can you tell us how your life changed? Can we ask you about before and about after? Perhaps the comparison will, we can, we can talk through that? Yeah. Um, so before transplant, um, essentially my whole life revolved around managing my cystic fibrosis um, and that involved uh, intensive daily treatments at home, including things like um, chest physiotherapy to help um, get rid of the, the buildup of mucus in the lungs. Um, and I also need to take a whole heap of medications, including antibiotics to help with chest infections again, um, and a, a range of different nebulised medications to help clear and open the, the airway so that I could breathe. So were you in and out of hospital a lot? Yeah, and that's the other thing. Even with those treatments, I would still need to go into hospital uh, quite regularly for periods of you know, two weeks at a time for intravenous um, antibiotic mm -hmm. therapy. Mm -hmm. And I would say in the period sort of leading up to transplant, I would spend probably a total of about three months of every year in hospital at that point. Mm -hmm. And despite all that, my lung function continued to get worse to the point where before transplant, I needed to move back home with my parents um, because I wasn't able to manage everyday tasks, things like showering, without assistance anymore. Um, at that point I was on oxygen and could probably only walk about 15 to 20 metres before mm -hmm. I would need to stop to rest um, to catch my breath. So certainly not able to go to work or no. studying or anything like Absolutely that? Absolutely none of that. Mm -hmm. I felt like I had a very poor quality of life. Um, the difference obviously after transplant was um, the difference between night and day, really. Mm. Um, most importantly was, was about the, the fantastic quality of life that I've had since transplant. And that's given me the opportunity, really, to um, realise a, a number of um, goals and ambitions, um, including things like being able to work, to pay taxes, um, <laughs> feel like I'm contributing to society in some sort of meaningful way. Um, chance to study, go to university and, and do some um, or a science degree and a master's of social work. And being able to travel overseas in particular because mm -hmm. I was never well enough to do that beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, but most importantly of all that, I've, I've had an extra 13 years that I've been able to spend with my family and friends mm -hmm. and 12 of those years with my wonderful partner. And Sam, how did you feel about someone needing to die for you to receive your lungs? Um, from my personal perspective and also from talking to other um, transplant recipients, I think uh, a feeling, a, a sense of guilt is something that people um, who've been organ recipients commonly experience. 
and I think that the reason for that is, is quite evident that when a person is um, on the transplant waiting list, we're obviously hoping that um, mm. the transplant mm. will become available in, in time to save our lives. Um, but there's that knowledge that in order for that process to happen, that someone will die in order to donate those organs. Um, and so there's that sense that um, as a recipient, we're in some way benefiting from mm -hmm. another person's tragedy. Um, it's something that I thought about, and for me, what I find helpful in terms of thinking about it is that for me, the two situations are, are very separate from one another. So the, mm -hmm. the um, organ donation and the transplant process are very separate um, in that Yes, someone did die for me to receive their lungs, um, but my needing or wishing for a, a transplant mm. did not in any way cause that tragic accident or, or situation or didn't lead to um, their death in any way. Um, what I also find helpful is um, the knowledge that um, the, the family, the, the donor themselves or their family made that decision to be an organ donor mm. and they did that knowing that this was a worthwhile thing and that by doing so they could save people's lives. So it was absolutely their intention yes. and you were... Yeah. Yeah. And I think also that um, that decision to donate can be um, the one positive thing that can come out of a, a, a situation that for the family members is really tragic and heartbreaking. Um, mm. And for me personally I think that if the, the best way that I can um, honour uh, my organ donor and um, show my appreciation of the, the gift that I've been given is just to live the best, best life that I can. And if I do that, then there's no reason to, to have any sort of feeling of guilt about that. Sam, thank you. I think that's given a whole new perspective. <laughs> so thank you, Sam, for telling your story. Thank you.